We burn out because we burn for something that we care about so much that we forget about ourselves. From my experience, it obviously doesn't happen overnight, but there are many stages that you go through before you officially burn out. Burnout is actually very common in engineering and I'm here to address it and hopefully help you prevent it. But first, let's talk about the five stages of burnout. The first stage is drive and ambition. This is basically when you have a new project at work or a new school semester and you're just so excited and you want a really good job that you're really motivated and driven to do that. The second stage is pushing yourself to work really hard at a point where you begin to neglect your personal care and needs. The third stage is displacement of blame. Instead of accepting the fact that you are indeed overworking yourself, you will end up placing the blame on your professors for the extra work they're giving you or your colleagues for your issues. The fourth stage is depersonalization. This is when you feel like you have no control over your life or your time and you begin to withdraw yourself from your family and friends. Being social and going out to movies, parties, or dinner dates begins to feel more like a burden or a chore instead of something that's actually enjoyable. The fifth stage is the beginning of anxiety and depression. This is an extreme case where you begin to feel hopeless with all the work that you put on yourself. At this stage, you're officially burnt out, you feel empty, mentally exhausted, and you just lack the motivation to do any work. So here are six tips to avoid burnout. Tip number one, have input focused goals. When we're really excited about achieving something, we tend to set our goals to be more outcome focused. For example, get an internship at Apple or rank top five in my class. These are incredible things to achieve, but the issue with setting up your goals like that is that they are out of your control to some extent. If you have an outcome focused goal, like get an internship at Apple, the reason this is out of your control is because you can't control the recruiter that looks at it, or you can't control the mood of the hiring manager when he's reading your resume. However, what you can control is the quality of your resume, your job interview skills, and the network that you build. So we can change our goals to be a little more input focused like reach out to five recruiters a week or learn a new skill every month. Similarly, if you have a goal like rank top five in my class, this goal is also completely out of your control because it's an outcome focused goal because you can't control how other students perform in your class, you can't control how hard the exam is going to be or how strict the grading process is. However, what you can control is how often you study, the quality of your study sessions, and your own understanding of the course material. So we can change our goals to be slightly more input focused, like study three times a week, for example. If you keep your goals outcome focused, and if you don't achieve them because of things outside of your own control, then you'll feel empty and unmotivated and then begin to burn out. But if it's an input focused goal, then you won't feel empty because everything in that goal is completely in your control. Your daily schedule should not be filled with you doing the exact same thing for every minute of the day. Instead, have some variety in your daily schedule by making some time to study, of course, but also make some time to hang out with friends, play sports, hit the gym, watch Netflix, etc. The reason diversifying your schedule like this is really important in helping you prevent burnout is it gives you something to look forward to when you're studying. That way you don't feel empty or unmotivated when you're doing the work that you have to do. Personally for me, outside of engineering, I train jujitsu, I work out, I hang out with friends, and of course, I work on this YouTube channel. This helps me feel more fulfilled because it gives me the sense that my life doesn't just revolve around one thing, which inevitably prevents me from feeling burnt out. Having all these extracurricular activities actually helped me focus more when I'm studying because I had all these exciting things to look forward to later in the day or later in that week. Just make sure to manage your time well because the last thing you want is to spend too much time on extracurricular activity and forget the actual studying or the actual work that you should be doing. Tip number three, work with others. You're obviously not alone in engineering and there are many people out there in your class that are probably facing similar things or can share their own burnout stories. Having others to relate to definitely helps in making you feel less empty and allows you to learn from other people to hopefully help you prevent burnout completely. Not only should you talk to other people about their schoolwork or their studies, but you should spend some time studying or working with other people. Now, I know some people like to study and be alone, but when you study with someone else or another group of people, it just makes your entire experience a little less stressful. If you're struggling, they can help you, and if they're struggling, then you can help them. And the best thing is that when you help people, it actually reinforces the concepts within you, so it's a win-win situation. Also, if you're both struggling on a particular concept, you can work together to figure it out and just having someone to relate to, again, makes the experience so much less stressful. From personal experience, in my first year of engineering, I would always study alone and I was very stressed all the time and on the edge of burnout. I remember vividly the day before my first ever final exam in university for a calculus course that I was taking in my first year of engineering, I was extremely stressed because there was this concept about 3D graphs that no matter how much practice I did, I just couldn't understand it. And the more practice I did, the more stressed out I would get. I even remember in detail that my hand was literally shaking every time I do some practice because I was just that stressed. The reason I personally studied alone in first year was because I thought studying with other people would just distract me and lower my grades. But in second year, I ended up studying with a few friends and what I found out was I was a lot less stressed studying with them than I would be when I was studying completely alone and my grades stayed about the same. Also, if you're curious to know a little bit more about what my grades were in engineering, I have an entire video just exposing myself right here.
Anyways, try to find a trustworthy group of people to study with to help you in avoiding burnout. Just make sure the group doesn't distract you. If they do, then maybe you'll need to find a different group of people to study with, or maybe you need to study alone and then just talk to them every now and then. Tip number four, have a waste of time activity. Things like playing video games, watching Netflix, or scrolling through TikTok are associated to be a waste of time activities, and it's something that many people will tell you to avoid. In fact, most videos that talk about building better study habits will tell you to stay away from them, but I disagree. Netflix, video games, and social media are very tempting to use, and if you don't plan time to indulge in them, what's going to end up happening is you're going to procrastinate on them when you're supposed to be studying. Instead, spend maybe 30 to 45 minutes at the end of the day just on those waste of time activities. That way, even when you're studying, you have something to look forward to as well at the end of the day. Also, when you give yourself some time to do these waste of time activities, it gives you the sense that you have control over your life and control over your time, which will help you from feeling burnt out at the end of the day. Personally, for me, I dedicate the last 30 to 45 minutes of the day just for watching Netflix because it's something that I enjoy and I treat it as a reward for myself for all the work that I've done that day. And over the past year, this allowed me to watch all my favorite shows like You, Money Heist, Lupin, and most recently, Squid Game. So basically picking one of these waste of time activities makes me feel like I'm not just working nonstop and allows me to feel like I have control over my life. Also, according to some studies, when you watch Netflix, your brain goes from a state of reason to a state of emotion. When this happens, you release endorphins. And endorphins are a hormone that basically make you feel good and helps you relieve stress and pain. Just make sure not to get too addicted and keep your Netflix time or whatever waste of time activity you're doing to be within the 30 to 45 minutes that you allocate for yourself. Also, a cool little thing about having these waste of time activities is it actually allows you to make friends because when you talk about these like very common things like shows you watch or sports or video games you play, it's a good way to kind of start small talk with other people and that small talk will eventually turn into like long lasting friendships. Not always, but sometimes. Tip number five, do something physical. Schoolwork, assignments, essays, exams, lab reports, confusing concepts, all of that puts a lot of stress on you. Similar to the waste of time activities I mentioned in the last tip, Playing sports and being physically active helps release endorphins. These endorphins react with the receptors of your brain that reduce your perception of pain. Endorphins also trigger a positive feeling in the body. Essentially, studying increases your stress level hormones like cortisol and adrenaline. Then being physically active or playing sports helps reduce these levels, which prevents you from feeling burnt out. Also, if your cortisol levels are high and you go to bed feeling stressed, you'll have trouble sleeping because your body will think that it's a danger and it needs to stay awake and fight. And if you have trouble sleeping, your study sessions the next day won't be as effective or productive. So try to do some kind of physical activity like playing soccer, basketball, swimming, biking, running, or hitting the gym or whatever else you might enjoy. And don't feel guilty about doing these things. You may feel like your time is better spent, you know, studying or hitting the books instead of being physically active or doing any kind of sport, but that's actually counterintuitive. I was actually reading an article recently and it quoted a particular study that concluded over 75% of doctor visits within the younger generation from like 18 to 29 year olds are for stress related illnesses. So keep that in mind. Tip number six, just remember that burnout happens and it's okay. Feeling burnt out is a common thing with engineering students and honestly with most university students as well. I faced it and I'm sure many of your peers have faced it in the past or are currently facing it right now. So if you're feeling overwhelmed or stressed, try to talk to others like your family, your friends, or even your professors or your teaching assistants. Make sure to keep your sleep, eating, and exercise habits in check. Try to sleep at least seven and a half hours a night. Make sure you're eating enough, maybe at least like two or three meals a day. And make sure that at least every other day you're doing some kind of physical activity. Take some time to rest if you feel like you need to and implement the tips that I mentioned in this video to hopefully help you avoid burnout completely. Anyways, I hope this video brought you value. If it did, here are two other videos that I think you might enjoy. Anyways, peace!